All right, so let's pick this up again now. All right, so good news is, first off, the first part recorded properly compared to last time where nothing recorded properly and there was no audio from my mic coming in. So, you know, we're already like two steps ahead of where we were last week, last Saturday. So I am going to just take that as a win and move forward. <laughs> So now something I will keep working on this leg here, but something I forgot to, well I guess yeah, I forgot to talk about before, but we'll talk about now is 3D printing. Because, and this is because 3D printing has kind of been, I guess in a sense like my, essentially like a gateway drug back into working on all this kind of stuff because once the modding for Supreme Commander kind of came to an end, I didn't really do all that much 3D art for quite a while, honestly. And, you know, there's definitely a few different reasons for that, and... Although, again, this is kind of like a story for another day. Planetary Annihilation, which had looked to be kind of like a way for me to continue working on stuff, didn't end up, didn't end up panning out all that well. So it kind of left me high, so I'm kind of, I was kind of left, or I had kind of left myself high and dry. I didn't have anything to work on for any kind of a project. And yeah, it's kind of like a, it was honestly kind of like just a bit of a downer. It was kind of like, well, damn, I don't really have anything else going for me. It's like, I've not been able to find anything else that is a good draw for me, like a good, uh, what's the best way to say it, like, okay, here's the thing, like, inspiration for me is, can be kind of hard to come by, so when I find something that kind of gets me really excited about it, it's tends to be the kind of thing I just go completely overboard on, so that was, you know, that's why for seven for seven years, Supreme Commander was such, you know, it was such a big, not really a time sink, but it was, it was, it took up a lot of my time. And now, you know, suddenly, I just didn't have, I didn't have something I could do with that for all my art. So I kind of went, kind of shifted into other areas. You know, I started, um, got back into uh, Warhammer 40k, and that's been fun. I've been definitely been much more um, reserved compared to when I was first into it where I would have at any given time five quote-unquote armies on the go whereas here I've been kind of back into that for a year and a half and so far I've only actually just started I only just picked up models for my second army and my first army Necrons is actually pretty competent at this point it's about 1500 points give or take and I've still got like another four to five hundred to paint up but progress progress slow and steady that's the best way to tackle those kind of projects because otherwise you just get so overwhelmed anyways so yeah I was drawn elsewhere and about a year ago I was talking to one of my buddies that I knew from kind of from Supreme Commander and just across even art for a few years and kind of he started uh, doing s doing stuff on shapeways and that was interesting to me like it's like for the longest time like early spring commander days I always loved the idea of being able to have a physical version of all these things I spend so much time designing digitally but you know five you know even like six years ago that was not easy to do especially on a smaller budget like mine so it never really kind of went anywhere. But now it's kind of gone to a point where, you know, I'm working, you know, I've, I'm obviously not, you know, I'm not exactly well off, but I'm well off enough that I can indulge in some pastimes and in addition to like the 40K stuff and other little things here and there, it's one of those has been 3D printing for me. and. Over the last years, and the, the 3D printing is actually kind of what really kickstarted the 
all the proxy war stuff because it's suddenly, you know, I had a few stuff already built, already designed, and it was kind of just sitting around. I was like, well, you know, I can probably 3D print all these and I can do them nice and little so I can get, you know, a bunch at once. And it just kind of went from there, right? Like you saw, like, you know, I've got like 10 different tanks now. All of which, you know, I got 3D printed and they've been, for the most part, kind of sitting around. And designing for 3D printing was actually a really interesting experience because, like, it's like, you know, it's one, you know, everyone knows I kind of like, you know, designing something 3D for games is different from designing something 3D for a movie and all that kind of stuff. But 3D printing is kind of, it's, you know, it's just like the other two. It's similar but it's got enough differences kind of that you uncover that it's like, oh, this is this is new and different and kind of weird and I hope I get this right. <laughs> so that was a really interesting process and that kind of, like essentially for the last year and a f two months, that has been what's really been driving a lot of my art stuff is 3D printing. And, it, you know, it's it's not, like it's certainly not, it's like at the rate that I design stuff and get it printed it's definitely an expensive hobby essentially but I don't know like there's just something so well it's that tangible feeling that especially for me who you know I've never had that before despite wanting it and finally getting it is like it was kind of like a very like you know light shines down from the heavens kind of moment it was really inspiring and so after my first few models what I did is I started as if you've played probably any amount of Black Ops you could probably recognize the names Basilisk and Goliath because those are essentially the poster child the poster children for the Black Ops mod and they are the two extremely high-end experimentals for the Cyber and UEF factions and so what I ended up doing is I took the game models, the models that we use to put them in the game, and I pretty much used those as the basis to completely remodel both of them and get them 3D printed as little, like, uh, what is that, about two inches? Two inches tall? That's calipers, don't fail me now. Yeah, they're about two inches tall. and. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, even though like you know the material I had them printed in wasn't the most highly detailed and it had its limits, once you kind of got them, once you kind of have them and you have them in your hand and you're looking, it's like this actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting, and like it's instantly recognizable. It's not like you know a half shape in you know mess that you have to kind of like give people hints and point them in the right direction for them to get it. It's, I mean that's ex it it is a basilisk and it is a goliath and they look and they look exactly like you would expect from seeing them in the game and that's like you know it was a really great feeling to kind of have that and it was kind of like the first time that it happened like i guess the best way to put it is like it's the first time that it happened on a large enough scale that it kind of really clicked for me sorry i've just been looking at them because I keep them sitting them in front of my monitors here. So let's back to work and keep talking. And so that's kind of what's really been driving well, driving me for a lot of my art stuff lately. And that's still kind of there. It's definitely not, re oops, not really gone anywhere, but if I guess you could say that. Uh, what's the best? That's not what I wanted. Probably the best way of saying it is that. Hmm. Okay, this is actually trickier than I thought. Ooh, I'm still not very good at multitasking yet. Hang with me, guys. Mm. Oh, jeez. Like it's still definitely a driver for me to design stuff, but it's kind of like I guess you could say the honeymoon is over and. A lot of the realities of of you know the circum of the prod of the workflow is kind of like caught up with me. Like you know, case in point, when I get something printed, 
A, I, it's, it pretty much means, you know, there's always the chance that the design, oh shoot, that's what I wanted. There's always the chance that the design, you know, might not get approved or might not be printable. And, you know, that kind of sucks. I mean, at this point I've gotten, I'm pretty confident at the point where if I design something and I've been paying attention to all the design guidelines and all that, it'll print fine, no problem. But, you know, there's still issues and it's actually a pretty long turnaround once you kind of time it all out because, you know, sure, great. Let's say I, I it's pretty, well, and especially me being up in Canada too, and that doesn't help. So pretty much when I order something, it is a, let's see, at minimum three week turnaround and I won't know the results until like like I won't be able to physically see the results until the very end and not that it's unreasonable to given you know the fact that there's no way I could do it any other way like if I want to 3D print something that's just going to be the way I have to do it but it's still like it was enough to kind of like pull away the magic a little bit I, and it's kind of slowed things down for me in that respect now I mean the biggest thing is always trying to pace yourself I've pretty much gotten to the point where when I order stuff I have to I do it in such a way where it pretty much means that if I'm ready to put an order in it's because I I've got like a hundred dollars worth of prints ready to go which is it definitely kind of slows things down, and the Canadian dollar is really shit right now. I think we're at like 70 cents for every American dollar. Woohoo! So, ordering online is kind of a pain nowadays, unless you're doing it from a Canadian retailer. And now, of course, this is kind of like a disclosure thing, but I do have the shapeways like I do I do have like a lot of like well all my proxy wear designs on top of a bunch of a few miscellaneous designs for miniatures as well as a bunch of um, Gundam model kit related designs are all available for sale off of shapeways and I will actually let's let's just pop over there and I can show you that but yeah so it's all available on there I and I do, essentially I do, quote unquote, I, you know, there is some, I do sell that publicly and I do get some kickback from that. It is not anywhere near as much as you might expect because I keep my markups very, pretty low, simply because I'm more concerned that, you know, people can find the stuff they want and can, you know, reasonably afford it, all things considered compared to, you know, something else. So let's see. So yeah, pretty much here is the shop. So you can see already here, like, this is pretty much, like, I think at this point it's like 70% proxy war stuff. So I got, you know, some subsections on the side here. Yeah, you can still see that. So I got, like, my Supreme Commander stuff. I've got all the proxy war stuff, still not quite two pages, but we're getting there. We've got model kits. I've only got the one because it's kind of... It's really hard to kind of break into that because just the way they do pricing, large stuff is expensive. Like, that... The kit for this... It builds... Do I not have any pictures? Okay. Well, it's essentially a larger version of... I don't have that linked here either. So it ends up being a larger version of this guy. <coughs> and the model kit is, of course, you know, essentially it's posable. I mean, it's limited by, you know, it's designed in some areas, but it's a multi-part kit. You got assembled very with glue, the hips and ankles are ball joints they don't lock in so you will need to find a pose and glue it but it gives you that freedom of motion it's articulated at the knees and where else is it articulated 
and it is also articulated in the arms as well. But I mean, you know, it's about it's a about three inches tall. It's of course a very kind of like squat kit. It's very long and pretty wide compared to its height. Like it's about three inches wide and about three and a half long front to back on the main guns. So it's it's just expensive, and even on that, my markup is still pretty low. So there's only so far I can go. I will probably like there's some stuff I'm working on, working on a bunch of spaceships that are printed in a different material. It's a higher higher resolution material, and they are each one will come in about 10 to 11 pieces so far, and they'll be coming in like. For the smaller ships, coming in pairs, or one of them even comes in a group of four, while the a larger ship comes only a single. And I'm trying to kind of normalize the prices on those as much as I can. So those will be, those are something I'm actually probably going to work on on the stream at some point. I'm not sure when. And they will go up on not on this shop. I'm actually doing a separate shop for this stuff, and I'm gonna try to keep this shop a bit more focused towards this kind of stuff. And yeah, I got some of the weapons. I, in particular, like, yeah, this guy. Definitely plan on using this design again somewhere else. I'm not sure where yet, but I just really like it. It's really cool to me. Hopefully other people find it cool too. But yeah, so this is all public. I will, if chances are, if you've already followed me on DeviantArt or on Flickr, you've definitely seen me post links to it multiple times. If you've been searching for mech stuff, you might have even stumbled across it through Shapeways. And so pretty much, yeah, like I've got all the Proxy War stuff through here. And I don't, generally speaking, I'd like this one I've actually well, generally speaking I don't list anything on the site until I've printed it and until I've gotten a copy myself and can verify that it prints well and that there's not any obvious flaws like with the basilisk initially there was a mistake that I had made with the model while well, posing it that all the little pistons and the legs weren't aligned so overall it still printed well but it didn't actually look right <laughs> Once you really got into it, so I kind of had to reprint it, and then I kind of then I listed it. So all this stuff here prints right as rain. This one comes in a set of four, as you can kind of see here. Back view, front view. Actually, I need to buy myself a copy of these because I don't have these anymore. I sold them at a convention. But yeah, so, you know, full disclosure, that's a thing I got, and while I, I will naturally be plugging it because, like I said, I do see some return on it, it's not anywhere near as much as you think, and although I don't want to dive into numbers, um, let's just say that between stuff I've had printed in order to list it and for personal use, I have outspent my return by at least eight times, so... Yeah, I think if you just kind of look through and look at some of the prices here, and even ignoring the markup, which again is pretty small, you can see that I've probably spent a good deal of money already, so it's not a profit thing, it's just as much as, you know, I like these designs and I want to share them, and I've definitely got a few people that I, when I see the emails come through for sales I've made, there's definitely a few people I see time and again, so, you know, clearly I'm doing something right, so I'm going to keep working on that because... You know, I've talked to these people a little bit, and, you know, they like the stuff and they want to see more. They want to, some of them have something specific in mind, which I've either, but, you know, I've taken into consideration when looking at future designs, all that stuff. Some people just, you know, one thing in particular just really works for them, so they buy like eight copies. That's just how it is. I've got, actually, of my designs, it is the torrent and the mini tyrant that have sold the highest number of models and are actually one of like there's essentially if you break it down design by design 
those are the only two that I think that I've kind of quote unquote broken even on. Everything else I'm still kind of in the red, but whatever. It's you know I'll I'm gonna bring it up because you know it's my thing. It's kind of like when I get paid out, I use it to fuel you know for printing off more stuff or you know treating myself stuff like that. One thing I'm going to be doing is I have recently decided that I'm going to, you know, as for 2016, stop being lazy. So I've started actually painting them. I've had some of these sitting around for over a year now, and I still haven't painted them or anything yet. So I'm painting a bunch. I've got two color schemes I picked out that I'm going to keep with. So I'll be consistent. I'm going to, as I finish, as I finish them, I'm going to try and set up a a photo rig and then take some nice pictures of those and then they'll go up here, they'll go up on DeviantArt. I don't think I'll do any streaming related to that because I mean my painting is really bad, like really bad, so there's no point sharing that. That's the kind of thing that I will do like I would do for like a podcast or something is I'd paint and then talk with people. But unfortunately I don't have any friends. So, you know, I can't really do that. If anyone, you know, happens to know someone who's looking for a nerd to sit in on a podcast or something like that, uh, you know, they can, you can send them my way. I'm definitely open to doing something like that. I need to practice with my speaking, essentially, because it's honestly not something I do all that much. But I'm definitely, you know, I'm putting myself out there to improve on that stuff, so there's that. Okay, let's close that, get back to work. So, yeah, like, well, what was my segue again? Shit. I'm bad at this. Uh, hmm. Well, anyways, you know, that's the thing I do. It's gonna come up again. So, I guess, sorry in advance. I mean, just gonna have to deal with it, you know? Okay, so that's got a goodly, goodly little bit of motion. I need a center line here so I can figure out the pivot on here. Center. Bam. Okay, how's that pivoting? So I don't get a lot of sway that way, but I do get a lot that way, so that's pretty much all I could ask for. That's all I really intended. Okay, that's coming along pretty well. Where can I go to next? So I guess what I should do is I'll link... Is that right? Oh, okay, it is. Perfect. Um, Okay, that's not good. Fix this parenting here so I don't pull my hair out about it later. Let's fix this up a little bit. Let's pull this out. And replace it with one of these. Actually, you know what I should do? Yeah, why don't I think of this sooner? This is so much easier than trying to remember. There, now I know where pivot points are. Actually, what I should do then is... Uh, no, I will just pull this over for now. Da -da 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 -da. Bam. Get rid of this. Move this in. There. Now this is a new parent for here. And I'll put it in the center line again for giggles. Alright. So now, let's kill that. Kill all of oops, this. I'll wipe that out. 
and oops there and we'll fry it on the other side okay that's pretty cool I want to bring look to it bit a little bit a little bit of padding I gotta fix the tail so it's not so much like a tail I wish I could bring the missile pods back more but I'm already kind of pushing the edge on my pivot here my clearance not much room there not much room at all So, I think I'll just have to leave it, suck it up, might try sliding the whole turret back a little bit. Actually, let's just do that. Don't really want to make it longer to the front, but that kind of centers it over the legs nicely, so we'll try that. See how that looks. How long have we been going for now? Eh, almost half an hour, okay. Like a few more tweaks. <coughs> I've actually got a viewer now, so that's cool. So, make a few more tweaks. I think for now I will stop streaming for now, just because it is during the week. I got work I still got to go to for again. And I'll be back Saturday. Good news is, is that the stream is working. So, let's focus on that. Kind of um, damn, what's the word I'm thinking of? Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, well. Anyways, stream's working. We'll just kind of focus on that. I'll see about getting these up on YouTube so they can be viewed after the fact. Start throwing those around too. And then I think, I think what I'll do is I'll work a bit more, I'll try and get the legs kind of at the same de level of detail as the rest of the design and then on Saturday we'll come in and I don't want to say finish the model but we'll kind of like do another detail pass and kind of really bring it all together that should be good for another hour or two on Saturday so that'll be nice I will hopefully by then have sorted everything out on the DeviantArt account, so I might plug that a little bit more, and hopefully I'll start seeing some activity over there. Actually, how does that light up? Oh, perfectly. So maybe, maybe I can make this wider. Maybe I can. So, yeah, this is actually something I mentioned last Saturday, but no one was around to see it, and if they were, they wouldn't have heard it, which is unfortunate, but my design process is very iterative. So I, you know, I know kind of what roughly where my end goal is. Like, I knew from the beginning this is going to be a long-range missile launcher, so I needed two large missile pods. I knew I wanted to be very reminiscent of things like the... Mammoth from Tiberian Sun and from some of the gears from Metal Gear Peace Walker that I don't quite remember enough the name of, but I remember seeing once and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I kind of knew that stuff. I started off with a very basic block model where using just like cubes and a few other sh and a couple other basic shapes, uh, about 20 of those, I roughed out kind of the entire design. And then I slowly started doing doing details and kind of cutting away and tweaking and pretty much in the end it's not going to go as quick as if I had like a full 
like a full full blown concept design all planned out and I was just creating the 3D model for it. It's not going to be quick like that. But the way I view it at least is that by doing it, by kind of designing it as I go, it might take me a little bit longer to get to kind of like the final design, but generally speaking, I will be very happy with that design at the end of the process. So it's something I just kind of stick around with. So it's so that's the process I've kind of stuck with for doing my 3D art. And while it's certainly been not been perfect, it's actually it's done me pretty well. So I will keep with that for now. Yeah, I kind of like that wider. I might need to make the head a bit bigger now. Let's. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably big enough at this point. I can do some other little details along the side here, but I'll wait for that. So, honestly, you know, I think this is kind of the point where we'll leave it for now. I, like I said, I'll probably work on this a little bit more between now and next Saturday. I'm kind of I'm not really busy for the next few days, but I've definitely not got an open schedule, so it might be starting from here. We'll see. Either way, I think we'll just start, we better just call it. Let's, before I go, we'll pull up my other mech designs for a proxy war, because I've still got them hidden in here. Yes, here we go. Let's just pull these out. Let's just see how to kind of how we're shaping up here. So, no, oh, okay. So he's missing legs. Let's see if we can find those. No. No, oh, did I get? Ah, uh -huh, there they are, okay. Oops. Okay. I fixed it. Yay. So, let's see. So, he's actually standing a little bit taller than the bases are, but... Let's just tweak that. I mean, the overall height is something that might change as I work on the legs, but for now... Actually, I kind of like that, yeah. The missile pawns are nice and big. They're definitely bigger than what's on our anti-air mech here. So it definitely helps them stand out. They're still a little bit bigger than the artillery or the napalm cannons we've got on our rapier here, which is good because it is going to be more artillery focused compared to this guy, which is a bit more like close range, mid range support artillery. This is going to be kind of the long range, you know, base destroying our rockets. Still got a good size, good size, a good size advantage over our little tiny, tiny runt mech, and it's not overly tall. Like, doesn't look. Might I might need to thin out the legs quite a bit because it still looks pretty tough when compared to our rook, which is kind of like our current bot or mech tank. But it's. It's good. I probably need to. I'm gonna tweak the head a bit more to make the quote unquote eye smaller. But there's not really much to complain about. I would say. Still got lots of details to throw in there to kind of bring it up to line. But yeah, we're on our way. So let's just hide all that again. We'll save. Oops. All right. And so I will see you guys on Saturday at, let's see, I think, yeah, we'll go with, we'll go for 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, because I'm, uh, I am on near the west coast of Canada, so we got a few days, and then I will see you then, and hopefully we can, I, if all goes well, we'll go until we kind of finish this, but we'll see. So until then, I will see you guys later.